Hey, this is Dr. K from IM Medical School here to talk about acute cholecystitis. Acute cholecystitis is when the gallbladder becomes suddenly inflamed. The most common cause of cholecystitis is due to calculi, otherwise known as gallstones. But patients can also develop acalculus cholecystitis. Acalculus cholecystitis is gallbladder inflammation that is not caused by gallstones. In addition, some patients can also develop a chronic cholecystitis that is more due to poor gallbladder function. What are the symptoms of acute cholecystitis? The most common symptoms in acute cholecystitis is abdominal pain. Patients generally present with a right upper quadrant or epigastric pain. The pain is generally sharp and can radiate to the right shoulder or back because of a phenomenon called referred pain. In addition, patients may describe nausea, vomiting, and poor food intake. Many patients note that fatty foods in particular make the pain and symptoms worse. When the patients present to the hospital, they generally are tachycardic because of underlying pain, but even may have fevers because of acute inflammation. It's important to identify signs of sepsis, abdominal crepitus, and bowel obstruction to identify severe forms of cholecystitis, such as emphysematous or gangrenous cholecystitis. The classical physical exam sign is called the Murphy sign. The Murphy sign is when you ask the patient to exhale. This causes the liver and gallbladder to rise. You place your hands in the right upper quadrant and apply pressure. Then as the patient inhales, the gallbladder comes in contact with your fingers, and if inflamed, pain will be elicited. This is called a positive Murphy sign. The sign has a 97% sensitivity and a 48% specificity. Now that you have taken a history and done a physical exam, what is the next step in the management of acute cholecystitis? The next step is to obtain a right upper quadrant ultrasound. An ultrasound helps identify features of the gallbladder that indicate inflammation and can identify the presence of gallstones. Gallbladder inflammation is indicated by gallbladder wall thickening of greater than 4 to 5 millimeters with edema, noted by the so-called double wall sign. In addition, a sonographic Murphy sign is when a sonographer tries to elicit the Murphy sign while visualizing the gallbladder. A sonographic Murphy sign is more accurate because the ultrasound confirms the gallbladder is being pressed on. It is important to read the ultrasound report carefully, as if the radiologist reports overlying bowel gas obscuring the gallbladder, and you have a very sick patient, consider emphysematous cholecystitis. The gas noted is actually in the gallbladder due to severe infection. Now what happens if you get an ultrasound and it comes back negative for cholecystitis, but you have a high clinical suspicion? The next step is to obtain a HIDA scan. The HIDA, or cholecystography, uses radioactive dye that is injected intravenously and is excreted by liver cells. As liver cells excrete the special dye, images are taken as the dye enters the bile ducts. Generally, dye enters the common hepatic duct from the liver and is routed into the gallbladder for storage. When there is a blockage in the cystic duct, this prevents dye from entering the gallbladder and is excreted into the small bowel. This blockage of the cystic duct may be due to gallbladder wall edema or gallstone causing obstruction. Cholecystography has a 97% sensitivity and a 90% specificity. Once you have the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis, how do we treat our patients? The treatment of, for acute cholecystitis is a cholecystectomy. A cholecystectomy is the removal of the gallbladder. Cholecystectomies used to be completely open procedures requiring large incisions and long hospital stays. With the development of laparoscopic, minimally invasive surgeries, cholecystectomies are now done via a laparoscope, reducing the complications and length of hospital stay. Many patients can be discharged within actually 24 hours of their surgery. In addition to acute cholecystitis, patients can also develop acalculus cholecystitis. This is a form of gallbladder inflammation that is not due to gallstones. Acalculus cholecystitis usually occurs in very sick patients who are admitted to an intensive care unit. Since these patients are very sick, they develop stasis of bile that can irritate the gallbladder lining and cause gallbladder inflammation. Unlike acute cholecystitis, acalculus cholecystitis can be associated with 
elevated liver function tests due to bile stasis. A-calculus cholecystitis can lead to bacteremia, so it's important to obtain blood cultures in these patients. The first step in diagnosis is, do, is to do a right upper quadrant ultrasound, and it's the easiest test with good sensitivity and specificity. If the ultrasound is equivocal, obtain a HIDAS scan, which has a near 100% sensitivity. Once the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis is made, it's important to start broad-spectrum antibiotics. Then the next step is to consider a cholecystostomy tube versus a cholecystectomy. Since these patients are very sick, a cholecystostomy tube is usually preferred. This drain is usually placed by an interventional radiologist that enters the biliary tree and gallbladder to allow for adequate drainage of the biliary system. Once the patient is stable enough, this patient will need a cholecystectomy. Well, that was a brief review of acute cholecystitis and acalculus cholecystitis. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a like. Make sure to share this video with your friends and classmates. Place any ideas for future videos or questions down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from My Medical School, and I'll see you next time.